from 1878 to 1968, there were 71 lake captains that called Bayview, Wisconsin, on the shore of Lake Michigan, their home. While they lived here, they captained 195 different ships, from tugboats to schooners to steamships, in voyages that took them to every one of the Great Lakes. Join us now for another episode of Bayview, Town of Lake Captains, where we explore not only these captains, but also their ships, their homes, their families, and their lifetime of sailing adventures on the Great Lakes. Hi everybody, today I'm in the quaint, cozy little backyard area here at 515 East Lincoln Avenue, once the home of Johanna Brach, Bayview's only female ship owner, and her husband, Captain John Brach, Bayview's most prolific schooner captain. It's a beautiful day, spring has sprung, a little cool, got my sweater on but I'll probably take it off here another couple hours or so. Now today's episode is a little bit different. We're not going to be talking about a Bayview Lake Captain per se, but we are going to be talking about a Lake Captain with a substantial connection to Bayview. Now that would be Eber Brock Ward, who many of you already know, built a rolling mill at the bottom of Lincoln and Bay Streets in Bayview, right down the hill from this house. That's where it was. During the course of conducting the research on the captains in Bayview, the lake captains in Bayview, I came across a lot of entries on ships belonging to Eber Brock Ward. Now there's different Eber Wards and sons and fathers and all sorts of things, so I entered those in the what would ultimately turn out to be 4,200 line spreadsheet of data and then, as I began to research more and more about Bayview, I discovered that there really wasn't anything anywhere 
that I could find, that I saw, that contained the ships of Eva Brock Ward. He was a lake captain first, and much later he built the rolling mill. Over the course of his life, he captained and owned many ships. And the only information I could find was very limited about these ships that pegged the number at 35, plus a few tugboats. My research uncovered another nine ships that I didn't see reported anywhere else. So what I decided to do, since I have all this data, I decided what I would do is put it together in an episode and in the book in an appendix on Eber Brock Ward's ships. What you're about to see here in this episode and in the book also is the first ever that I know of that I could find publication of all the ships of Eber Brock Ward. I also took the time to find all the photos or drawings of these ships. And so you have a complete data gathering and publication on the ships of Eber Brock Ward. I'm going to now turn it over to our professional narrator from England, theater trained narrator from England, Simon Stanhope, who's going to tell you a whole lot more about Eber Brock Ward ships, and I think you'll find it uh, interesting. If you want information on all the sources, that's in the book. So, episode two just came out, so take a look at it, and before I sign off, I'm going to say this, remember, hats off to our Bayview Lake captains, see you later, and enjoy the spring, it's here folks, see you next time, bye bye. Welcome to another installment of Bayview, Town of Lake Captains where we discuss the lives of the 71 different lake captains that once lived in Bayview, Wisconsin, during the late 19th and early 20th centuries, in the age of sail and steam. This discussion will include their ships, their homes, their families, and their lifetime of sailing adventures on the Great Lakes. Today we will be discussing the ships of Eber Brock Ward, the founder of Bayview and the Bayview Rolling Mill though he lived in Michigan. Long before he built the mill, Ward was a lake captain and ship owner. Because of his importance in Bayview's history, he is included in this channel and this episode. Much has been written about him, and no attempt will be made to continue that broader discussion here. However, most people are unaware that, in addition to Ward's rolling mill background in Bayview, he also had a substantial maritime career in the decades before building the mill in 1868. Perhaps of most interest, we will provide the first ever complete listing of the 44 ships and two tugboats he once owned during his illustrious shipping career on the Great Lakes. Many of these have never been published before, and none have been published together in one place before until now. Here is a link to an article written by Michigan author Kathy Warns. E. B. Ward spent most of his life and career in Michigan that provides a good summary of Ward's maritime background and can be found on her website. E. B. Ward, early in his youth, also lived from 1830 to 32 at the Boer Blanc Island Lighthouse in northern Lake Huron, while his father, Eber, was the lighthouse keeper there he was its first keeper. While at the lighthouse, it's interesting to note that E. B. got his first experience in business by catching his own fish and then salting them to take to market. Details of these adventurous days, to include E. B. Ward's sister Emily's handwritten account of the lighthouse's collapse during a storm in 1837, are provided on the website lighthousefriends.com at this link. Yet, despite the above background, there was one thing of interest that was especially intriguing. In the book The Story of Bayview, page 49, 
Author Bernard Korn provides just two sentences about anything maritime associated with Bay View, and that comes solely in describing the ships of Eba Brock Ward. No mention is made of Bay View Lake Captains or the maritime industry of Bay View. Korn provides the following information about Ward's ships. First, that Ward served on the freighter Baltic in 1845. Second, that his first command was of the schooner General Harrison. And third, that when his uncle Samuel Ward died, Eber inherited all of his uncle Samuel's maritime assets of fourteen steamships, six sailing ships, and many tugboats. Korn then adds that Eber added twelve more steamships and three propeller ships to the business over the years. Doing the math and adding these up, the total number of ships owned by Eber Brock Ward comes to thirty-five, excluding the tugboats, since their exact number was not defined. This information from Korn generated the following questions. What were the names of these ships? What years did E. B. Ward own them, and what did they look like? During the years that all seventy-one of Bayview's lake captains were being researched for this book, information about Ward's ships was also discovered in many different sources, and this information was retained. The final 4,685 spreadsheet lines of the research on the captains thus also contained many entries for Eber Brock Ward, deciphered so as to differentiate between the three other family members named Eber Ward, who were also ship owners. During this research and assembly into the spreadsheet, it became quite apparent that Ward owned quite a few more ships than Korn reported. Nine more, in fact. This research showed that Ward owned forty-four ships, not thirty-five, excluding two tugboats discovered. But there was one more interesting thing discovered. There was no source that incorporated all of Eber Brock Ward's ships into one single report or article. Reports and articles discovered were limited and scattered in terms of ships named, and if ship photos of these few ships reported as captained and or owned by Eber Brock Ward were included, they were few. There were even ships that weren't included in these few articles, new ships of Eber Brock Ward that likely have never been published before. No, Eber Brock Ward wasn't a Bayview Lake Captain, but he was a Lake Captain and ship owner first, before becoming a big part of Bayview history. It is believed that what follows next is the first time a complete, full, and total compilation of all of Eber Brock Ward's ships has ever been produced and published in one place, and or accompanied by and with all available ship photos and renderings. Many of these ships owned by Ward have never been reported before at all. All sources for the information in this video can be found in the book Bay View, Town of Lake Captains, in the special appendix there about Eber Brock Ward's ships. His ships are broken down by date, type, and E. B. Ward's position, captain and or owner. Ships owned later, after Eber Brock Ward's death in 1875, by his son, Eber Ward II, sometimes listed also as junior, are not listed. He was also a shipbuilder, with his uncle Samuel Ward, and together they built many ships. However, this episode only focuses on ships Eber Brock owned and or crewed and or captained. In compiling these ships, it's important to note that there were four Eber Wards, his father, himself, his son, and a cousin. Thus the reason why he is always found to be either Eber Brock Ward or E. B. Ward. Without either of these names, Eber Brock or E. B. used, it wouldn't be possible, or only with great difficulty, to sort out E. B. from his cousin Eber, who also owned ships. By contrast, his son, Eber Brock Ward II, or Junior, is easier for that reason. Finally, since Eber Brock Ward died in 1875, any ships that appear owned after this date cannot be him, and are most likely his son. Also note the date of 1868, 
that Ward built Bayview's rolling mill is identified and emphasised in the listing provided next, so that Bayview residents can see the extent of Ward's substantial maritime career, nearly thirty years before he built the mill. He was a lake captain and ship owner first. He captained five different ships, one schooner and four steamships, all between 1835 and 1850. His ship ownership total reached an amazing 46 different ships, 78% of them, 39, before 1868, when he built the Bayview Rolling Mill. We will now read the main details of each ship owned by Eber Brock Ward. A photo of each will be displayed if one was discovered during our research. We begin with those ships he owned before building the Bayview Rolling Mill. eighteen thirty five to forty General Harrison Schooner Captain, mate and co owner with his uncle Samuel Ward eighteen forty to forty eight Huron Steamship Captain and co owner with his uncle Samuel Ward and other Detroit co owners. 1843-47 to 47, Champion, Steamship Captain and original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1846 Detroit, Steamship Captain, 1852 and original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1847 to 56 Samuel Ward steamship original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1848 to 50 Franklin Moore steamship captain and original co-owner with uncle Samuel Ward though co-owners unknown 1848 to 52 Pacific steamship original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1849 Atlantic steamship original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1849 to 52 Canada steamship Original owner. 1849 to 52. Ocean Steamship. Original co owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1851 to 56. Arctic Steamship. Original co owner with uncle Samuel Ward plus one. 1852 Caspian Steamship Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1853 Cleveland Steamship Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1852 Forest City Steamship Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward and Ira Davis, through their company Davis, Ward & Co. 1852. Hudson, Steamship. Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1852. Huron, Steamship. Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1852 London Steamship Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1852 Pearl Steamship Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 1852 Peninsula Steamship Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward 
1852, St. Louis, Steamship. Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1852, Telegraph, Steamship. Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1852 to 55, Traveller, Steamship. Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1854 to 66, Forrester, Steamship. Original owner. Forrest Queen, Steamship. Original co-owner with his uncle Samuel Ward. 1855 to 63, Planet, Steamship. Original owner. 1856, Wyandot, Schooner. Original owner. 1856 to 70, Montgomery, Steamship. Original owner through his Detroit and Lake Superior line. 1856 to 59 and 1863 to 64. Marquette, Barkentine. Original owner, then co owner, 1863 to 64. 1857 to 58 and 1861 to 66. Ark, steamship, barge. Original owner, co owner, with Detroit co owner from 1861 to 66. 1858. Gazelle. Steamship. Original owner. 1859. Comet. Steamship. Original owner. 1859 to 63. Seabird. Steamship. Built for E.B. Ward, original owner Emily Ward, his sister. 1861. Antelope, steamship, original owner. 1861 to 62. Colonel Cook, schooner, owner. 1863. Stephen Clement, Steamship, Original Owner 1866, Saginaw, Steamship, Original Owner through his Toledo and Saginaw line And here are the ships Eber Brock Ward owned after building the Bayview Rolling Mill in 1868. 1868-75, Foal, Steamship, original owner through his Detroit and Lake Superior line. 1870-77, Annie L. Craig, Steamship, original owner through his Eagle Transportation Company until 1874, then through his Central and Pacific Lake Company, Buffalo to Duluth route. 1872. Mars. Schooner. Original owner. 1872 to 75. Mercury. Schooner barge. Original owner. 1872 to 75. E.B. Ward, Jr. Tugboat. Owner. 1872-75. USRC John A. Dix. U.S. Revenue Cutter. Owner, 1872-73. Co-owner, 1873-75. 1873. Minneapolis. Steamer. Owner, through his Lake Superior line. 1873-75, to 75, Sport, Tugboat, Owner. 1873-77, to 77, 
City of Fremont, Steamship. Owner, through his Central and Pacific Lake Steamboat Company, Lake Michigan, Detroit, Lake Superior Route. 1874 to 75. Helena, Schooner Barge. Owner. 1874-75, Phil Sheridan, Steamship, owner, through his Central and Pacific Lake Company. Thanks for watching. This photograph isn't about Bayview or its lake captains, but it's from the same era of Great Lakes maritime history. We thought we'd close with it for enjoyment, as it captures the spirit of the era. This channel and its matching website also plan to support various maritime history projects related to Bayview's lake captains. One of these is a plaque and marker with the captains' names and addresses on it as part of the creation of the Bayview Lake Captains Historic District, which will be the first of its kind in America. If you would like to support these projects, to include this and other markers honouring Bayview's lake captains, with 100% of all contributions in all forms going to support them, please consider donating to us through the listings shown next. If, for some reason, we are unable to secure these markers, then all funds donated to this site will be given as a cash donation to the museum ship SS City of Milwaukee in Manistee, Michigan. That is the only surviving intact ship once captained by at least two and likely three different Bayview Lake captains. I'm Simon Stanhope, narrator for these episodes. Join us again soon for the next chapter of Bayview, Town of Lake Captains.